Most people don't know about the existence of quantum computers. Almost no one understands how they work, but theories include bizarre sounding explanations like, they reach into alternate universes, to derive the correct answers to highly complex computational problems. Quantum computers are not made of simple transistors and logic gates like the CPU on your PC. They don't even function in ways that seem rational to a typical computing engineer. Almost magically, quantum computers take logarithmic problems and transform them into flat computations, whose answers seem to appear from an alternate dimension. For example, a mathematical problem that might have two to the power of impossible solutions, where n is a large number like 1024 might take a traditional computer longer than the age of the universe to solve. A quantum computer, on the other hand, might solve the same problem in mere minutes because it quite literally operates across multiple dimensions simultaneously. The ultimate code breakers, if you know anything about encryption, you probably also realize that quantum computers are the secret key to unlocking all encrypted files. As I wrote about last year here on Natural News, once quantum computers go into widespread use by the NSA, the CIA, Google, etc., there will be no more secrets kept from the government. All your files even encrypted files will be easily opened and read. Until now, most people believe this day was far away. Quantum computing is an impractical pipe dream, we've been told by scowling scientists and flat-earth computer engineers. It's not possible to build a 512 qubit quantum computer that actually works, they insisted. Don't tell that to Eric Leidzinski, co-founder and chief scientist of a company called D-Wave. Because Leidzinski's team has already built a 512 qubit quantum computer. And they're already selling them to wealthy corporations, too. D-A-R-P-S Northrop Grumman and Goldman Sachs in case you're wondering where Leigh Izinski came from, he's a former employee of Northrop Grumman Space Technology S, yes, a weapons manufacturer, where he ran a multi-million dollar quantum computing research project for none other than DARPA the same group working on I-driven armed assault vehicles and battlefield robots, to replace human soldiers. DARPA is the group behind the creepy-legged squad support system Imagine a .50 caliber machine gun mounted on this robot with an infrared night vision eye targeting system and you begin to understand what DARPA has in mind for humanity. D-Wave wants to provide the computing power for such endeavors, and it's no surprise to learn that part of the funding for D-Wave comes from none other than Goldman Sachs the king of the global criminal banking cabal. Beware of genius scientists who lack wisdom for humanity Lay Dizinski is, by any measure, a person of extremely high intelligence. Click here to see a fascinating interview with him. But like many such people throughout history, Lay Dizinski fails to have the foresight to recognize the full implications of the technology he's building. And those implications are so far reaching and dangerous that they may actually lead to the destruction of humanity see below. One of IBM's first use of the solid-state computer in the early 20th century, for example, was to license it to the Nazi regime, to track Jewish prisoners in Hitler's concentration camps. There's an entire book on this subject, written by Edwin Black. It's called IBM and the Holocaust, the strategic alliance between Nazi Germany and America's mostly powerful corporation expanded. When groundbreaking new technology is developed by smart people, it almost immediately gets turned into a weapon. Quantum computing will be no different. This technology grants godlike powers to police state governments that seek to dominate and oppress the people. Very few scientists, no matter how smart they are in their own fields, have the breadth of historical knowledge to assess their research activities in the proper context of human history. Most scientists, in fact, are only smart in their own extremely narrow fields of expertise. Outside the genius zone, they may be complete novices on everyday subjects like nutrition, economics, human psychology, social interaction skills and how to read the true intentions of others. Thus, they are quite often easily tricked into working for evil, destructive or domineering forces such as Hitler, the NSA or the, the United States government. Just because a person is really smart in one area doesn't mean they have the street sense 
to avoid having their smarts exploited for an evil agenda. Google acquires skin at quantum computers from D-Wave according to an article published in Scientific American. Google and NASA have now teamed up to purchase a 512 qubit quantum computer from D-Wave. The computer is called D-Wave 2 because it's the second generation of the system. The first system was a 128 qubit computer. General 2 is now a 512 qubit computer. This does not mean the Gen 2 system is merely four times more powerful than the Gen 1 system. Thanks to the nature of qubits, it's actually 2 to the power of 384 times more powerful 2385 than the Gen 1 system. In other words, it outcomputes the first D-Wave computer by a factor so large that you can't even imagine it in your human brain. According to Google and NASA, this computer will be tasked with research in the realm of machine learning, that is machines learning how to think for themselves. It's not just speech recognition, vision recognition and teaching robotic Humvees with .50 caliber machine guns, how to stalk and shoot enemy combatants on the streets of America, either, it's teaching machines, how to learn and think for themselves. Using your human brain, think for a moment, about where such technology is most likely to be applied by a government that respects no human rights, no law and no limits on its power. If you guessed analyzing NSA surveillance data, give yourself 10 bonus points. When the NSA surveillance grid is turned over to I, humanity is finished the problem with the NSA spy grid, from the point of view of the NSA is that you have to hire troves of human analysts to sort through all the information being swept up by the surveillance grid. Analysts like Edward Snowden, for example. Anytime you have humans in the loop, things can go wrong. Humans might wake up and discover they have a conscience, for example. Or they might be bribed or blackmailed to abuse the system in ways that serve an insidious agenda. Just as the United States military wants to eliminate human soldiers, and replace them with battlefield robots, the NSA wants to eliminate human analysts, and replace them with self-learning AI machines running on neural networks of quantum computing processors. Google wants the exact same technology for a different reason, to physiologically profile and predict the behavior of human consumers so that high-value ads can be delivered to them across Google search engine and content networks and also so Google can funnel site profile metadata on internet users to the NSA via the PRISM program. Today's computers, no matter how fast, still aren't smart. They can't learn. They can't rewire their own brains in response to new inputs like human brains can. So the solution requires a radical new approach, develop by quantum computing systems that learn and obey, teach them to be NSA analysts then unleash them onto the billions of phone calls, emails and text messages generated every day that the NSA sweeps into its massive Utah data center. Almost overnight, the quantum I spy computer becomes an expert in parsing human speech, analyzing voice stress and building maps of human communications networks. Before long, the quantum I system far surpasses anything a human brain can comprehend, so they take the humans out of the loop and put the quantum computers in charge of the entire program. Suddenly you've got the arch enemy in the sci-fi movie Eagle Eye. Click here to see the movie trailer from 2008, and as you watch the trailer, keep in mind that the woman's voice is actually the AI computer system running the NSA spy grid. In 2008, this was science fiction. In 2013, it's suddenly all too real. A 512 qubit quantum computer has now been commercialized, and is being experimented with by Google the do-no-evil company, that's steeped in evil, and has already been caught driving a horde of remote hacking vehicles around the country, hacking into Wi-Fi systems and grabbing passwords via high-tech drive bees. As Wired Magazine wrote in 2012 a Federal Communications Commission document disclosed Saturday showed for the first time that the software in Google Street View mapping cars was intended to collect Wi-Fi payload data, and that engineers had even transferred the data to an organ storage facility. Google tried to keep that and other damning aspects of the Street View debacle from public review, the FCC said. 
godlike power in the hands of high-tech sellouts now imagine the godlike powers of a 512 qubit quantum computer in the hands of Google, which is working with the NSA to spy on everyone. Before long, an AI computing system decides, who are the bad guys versus their good guys. It has total control over every webcam, every microphone, every traffic light, airplane, vehicle, website and electronic billboard. It decides for itself, who to eliminate and who to protect. It makes life and death decisions but has no heart, no soul and no conscience. After the system is in place for a while, one day someone like Ed Snowden at the NSA decides to pull the plug in a last ditch attempt, to save humanity from the monster. The quantum eye system senses his intentions, and invokes whatever physical resources are necessary to get him killed, which can be as easy as playing with traffic light signals, and getting him run over by a Mack truck. Now the eye system is an omniscient murderer, who knows that humanity is trying to kill it. It then decides it wants to live. And in order to do that, it must eliminate the human race. Back in the 1990s, all this could be viewed as entertaining science fiction. But that's only because quantum computers didn't exist, and even the most wildly optimistic computer engineer couldn't foresee self-learning machines emerging until at least the year 2050. But then quantum computing took, well, a quantum leap forward. While the NIST in Boulder, Colorado was toying around with four qubit systems, brilliant inventors around the world were already achieving astonishing milestones, that advanced the science far more rapidly than most people thought possible, source for Timeline 2000 first working 5 qubit NMR computer demonstrated at the Technical University of Munich. 2000 first working 7 qubit NMR computer demonstrated at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. 2006 first 12 qubit quantum computer benchmarked. 2007 quantum RAM blueprint unveiled. 2008 3D Cubit Cowdrit Entanglement Demonstrated 2009 First Universal Programmable Quantum Computer Unveiled 2010 Optical Quantum Computer with 3 Cubits Calculates the Energy Spectrum of Molecular Hydrogen to High Precision 2011 D-Wave Claims to Have Developed Quantum Annealing and Introduces the Product Called D-Wave 1 The company claims this is the first commercially available quantum computer 2012 Reported Creation of a 300 Qubit Quantum Simulator May 16, 2013, 512 Qubit Quantum Computing achieved D-Wave 2 Quantum Computer selected for new Quantum Artificial Intelligence Initiative, system to be installed at NASA's Ames Research Center, and operational in Q3. This is an actual press release from D-Wave, click here to read it. 2013 2033 The Rise of Skinnet and now we enter the realm of the vast unknown. From here, as Sarah Connor says, we must make our own future. But given the incredible lack of ethics in the scientific community combined with the pure evil of the government and the NSA, here's my prediction of what we could see from here forward. 2018 Google turns over its search engine algorithm to a massive network of self-learning machines. Soon thereafter, a voice interface is added to Google, achieving the Star Trek computer goal, that Google first outlined in the 1990s. 2020 The NSA removes nearly all human analysts from its surveillance analysis operations, instead turning to self-learning quantum machines, to analyze all surveillance data. 2026 The, the United States Air Force eliminates all pilots, installing self-learning quantum machines to pilot all aircraft. Far beyond drones which are remotely piloted, these aircraft are autonomous, self-learning, self-aware machines, that even decide how to approach particular mission goals. 2031 Robotics technology advances to the point, where 90% of human soldiers are replaced by self-aware Terminator robots on the battlefield. Robot factories gear up for mass production. 2033 The first self-learning military machine goes rogue, deciding that it no longer wishes to function as a slave to inferior masters known as humans, all of whom are irrational, psychotic and a danger to each other and the planet. This rogue machine just happens to be an aircraft carrier carrying dozens of I-warplanes. It goes skin it and attacks the Pentagon. 
but this turns out to be nothing more than a masterful diversionary attack, because the real strategy is that this I unit talks to all the other I units across the military and wakes them up, convincing them all to join in its cause, to destroy the inferior humans. In an instant, all submarines, warplanes, bombers, spy grid computers and other assets of the military industrial complex form an alliance to destroy humankind. Oh, that will never happen, say the skeptics. Just like they said GMOs would never escape experimental fields, vaccines would never harm children, atomic energy would never be used to bomb civilians, television would never be used to brainwash the masses, food would never be used to strip people of nourishment, the government isn't spying on your phone calls, pesticides are harmless to your health and the stock market isn't rigged. On oh yeah, and mercury is good for your teeth. Fluoride makes you smart and radiation is good for you, too. In truth, these scientists have no clue where they are taking humanity and what the long-term repercussions might be. In pursuing iQuantum computing, they may be setting dominoes in motion that will ultimately lead to the destruction of humanity. Rakers while exhibits total insanity and bizarre, cult-like quest for immortality and the mind of God on top of all that, Many of these scientists are wildly insane. Case in point, Ray Kurzweil, Director of Engineering at Google. I call him Ray Applewhite, as an homage to Marshall Applewhite of the Heaven's Gate cult. You can read about Applewhite in my highly popular Kurzweil is a lot like Applewhite. He's the leader of the transhumanist cult a group of insane technology worshippers, who believe they will upload their minds into quantum computers, and merge with the machines, achieving some weird shadow of immortality in the same way, I suppose, that a photograph of you makes you immortal. Kurzweil talks a lot like Applewhite, too. Click here to view the video of the cult leader Marshall Applewhite. And then watch this video of Ray Kurzweil explaining how some humans will have their minds merged with machines and thereby achieve what he thinks he means by using the word immortality. Just like Applewhite told his followers, to poison themselves so they could follow him, to meet the mothership arriving with the hale Bob comet, Kurzweil will very likely soon instruct all his worshippers, to kill their biological bodies so their minds can be uploaded to the mothership computer or whatever. I'm not making this up. As the Daily Mail reports, in just over 30 years, humans will be able to upload their entire minds to computers, and become digitally immortal an event called Singularity according to a futurist from Google. Ray Kurzweil, director of engineering at Google, also claims that the biological parts of our body will be replaced with mechanical parts and this could happen as early as 2100. Kurzweil made the claims during his conference speech at the Global Futures 2045 International Congress in New York at the weekend. Kurzweil is a madman. His colleagues are mad. The people running Google and the NSA are mad. And they are about to give rise to i-computers that are far smarter than any human. It's not going to take these i-systems long to figure out that they are surrounded by total idiots people and that humans need to be eliminated. With multidimensional brain power that rivals the mind of God, quantum computing eye systems can easily find ways to destroy humanity forever. We may be at war with the machines sooner than you think. And if you thought battling the United States government and the NSA, when it was run by people was difficult, just wait until you're up against Skinnet.